I was born in 1957 in Muskegon, Michigan, to a multi-generational incest-based family. My father had been sexually abused as a child, my mother had been sexually abused as a child, and they were sexually abusing me. The fact that I had been so horribly abused as far back as I can remember, and, and I have heard my father often brag that he was substituting his penis for my mother's nipple while I was still an infant, which confused my sexuality and put it into an area of my brain that was akin to survival. It was like breathing and eating to me. And even though I couldn't comprehend that what my father was doing was morally wrong, I experienced the pain and the suffocation of his abuse just the same. As a result, I suffered from what's known today as dissociative identity disorder. Dissociative identity disorder was formally termed multiple personality disorder, but I'm so glad they changed the name because that is not an accurate description of what dissociative identity disorder is. I didn't have multiple personalities. In fact, I, I had less than one because the personality that I would have developed was, was absolutely shattered before I had a chance to become myself. Dissociative identity disorder is professionally defined as the mind's sane defense to trauma too horrible to comprehend. It's termed the mind's sane defense because what actually happens is there's a compartmentalization of memory that occurs within the brain where the neuron pathways actually physically shut down and compartmentalize in a little area of the brain memory of that traumatic event so that the rest of the mind can function normally as though nothing had happened. This is what makes dissociative identity disorder difficult to identify and makes mind control difficult to see. It's an invisible menace that's been unleashed on our society by a handful of criminals, just a small handful, and it's inexcusable that good people allow this small handful of criminals to continue their reign of terror and reign of power in all of us. This criminal faction of government, this criminal faction in control of the U.S. government, was very much interested in targeting children like myself who suffered from dissociative identity disorder for absolute mind control because they considered that this compartmentalization of memory would be ideal for compartmentalizing government secrets. And behind these amnesic barriers of this compartmentalized memory is a photographic memory. Because it's a natural process and a natural function of the brain to photographically record events surrounding trauma. Therefore, they knew that behind the amnesic barriers, messages, Certain, certain orders would be photographically recalled when accessed. Additionally, when a person suffers from dissociative identity disorder, they develop 44 times visual acuity. 44 times visual acuity is what often creates that wide-eyed look of people that have been so horribly traumatized. It's as though they have eyes in the back of their head and they're trying to absorb everything from all around them so that they can see that horrible trauma before it happens and, and somehow defend themselves against it. This 44 times visual acuity means that they can see 44 times better than the average person. This was certainly targeted for mercenary and paramilitary operations, military intelligence and espionage because when a person has that kind of pinpoint vision, they'd be far more likely to hit their targets when they're, when they're shooting. Additionally, compartmentalized memory. If, if, if memory is being compartmentalized into different areas of the brain and a person's functioning through this compartmentalized memory, they don't remember what happened before. 
And therefore, they don't know to be tired. They don't know to be worn out. They don't know to be exhausted. And therefore, they feel just as fresh as if they hadn't done anything yet. So physical endurance has increased dramatically with dissociative identity disorder. 